Well, we're blessed this day to have Ryan Hannon with us this morning. Uh, I first met Ryan just a few months ago when Bill and Michelle were receiving the 2021 Sarah Harding Award, also receiving the Sarah Harding Award that same evening was Ryan. And we had first chance to meet and greet each other just a little bit and looking forward to getting to know you even better. Uh, Ryan's the street outreach coordinator for Goodwill Northern Michigan. He has a passion for ending homelessness in his direct work with people living on the streets. He's been doing this for nearly a decade. He also serves as operations partner of Safe Harbor of Grand Traverse Incorporated and is also part of Street Advocate, a resource for the betterment of the homeless. Ryan's work puts him in regular contact with Bill and Michelle. And so they have a working relationship that, uh, that helps them increase their own ministries. And so we're thankful for all of that. I won't um, take up any more time this morning because you're going to want to hear Ryan Hannon. Will you make him welcome? Thank you all for having me. Can you hear me okay in the back? Turn on my clicker. Here we go. Okay. Um, I'm glad to be with you today. Um, Leland is a, a beautiful place, and um, I don't know if you've ever been to a basketball game here at your school. My, my daughter plays on uh, Grand Traverse Academy, and so we have the, the pleasure to come visit, and, and uh, I just have to say that you guys have some of the best fans in all of northern Michigan. It's a joy, joy to see. So thank you for having me. Uh, um, it, it's cold out there, like uh, Pastor Tim said. I, I actually, I, I love winter. It's, uh, uh, I love all the seasons. I, I just really appreciate winter. It really helps, helps me stay grounded and, and uh, humbled. When it's, when it's this cold outside, you, you realize that there is something more powerful than you out there. But... Um, Another kind of added, added benefit for winter for me today is I was able to find a parking spot in your town, so <laughs> another blessing. So um, I, I, we start with this slide, uh, the, the title slide here, and it has uh, the, the banners you may have noticed downtown Traverse City where it says Housing Ends Homelessness, and we're, we're part of the Northwest Michigan Coalition to End Homelessness. And I, I point that out because as, as a coalition, we work together to end homelessness. Homelessness cannot be ended on its own. It takes us all, and, and the group is a, a bunch of uh, agencies, uh, people that care, and we really work to, to coordinate the resources and, and make them make the most impact in our community to end homelessness. And um, it's a special uh, pleasure for me for those banners downtown. I always wanted to see something like that and never really thought the opportunity would come, but it, it has. And so we're able to spread the word about homelessness even down there where they have the Cherry Fest. So, oh good, it works. Um, what is homelessness? We think of it as, it's, it's hard to imagine what homelessness is and grasp in our brain. How could someone actually be out there? We might think they want to be homeless. They must. It's, it's hard for us to grasp. So hopefully I can help um, enlighten and, and shed some uh, uh, light on, on really what, what happened. So we, we really think of homelessness as a math problem, how much it costs to live and how much money people have. What is their support system? People experiencing homelessness have, uh, we look at indicators of higher risk, uh, people that experience trauma. A lot of times as a child, uh, 14 years I've been doing this, Pastor Tim, and, and the only common thing with every single person I've ever served, besides being human and homeless, is trauma in their lives. Either as a child or a traumatic event, something, and started a downward spiral in their life. Um, there's compromised mental wellness, which turns into efforts to find relief. And sometimes people turn to substances. But we really dive down into that. We, we, we can't just blame homelessness on these issues. We have to think about how many people have compromised mental uh, wellness out there, how many people struggle with substance use disorder that never get help for it, yet never, ever, ever fall into homelessness. 
Some local nuances we see. We have a tourism economy, lots of um, seasonal jobs, high rents, low vacancy rates. That makes it hard to find a place to live when you're experiencing homelessness. It's hard enough for, you may have family or friends that want to move here that have a hard time. Maybe they're staying with you and they're still with you because they can't find a place to live. Finding housing is really, really difficult. I have this up here, TC versus West Palm. I had the, the uh, opportunity in 2016, I was invited to come down to, to West Palm Beach, Florida to train and coach their street outreach team down there. And it was uh, so interesting to me because it reminded me of Traverse City and the tourism economy and, and how hard it was to find places to live. But I, I put this up here because it, it shows the kind of the, the proportion of, of homelessness to the, the population. So if we looked at like per capita, we actually have a higher rate of homelessness in Traverse City than, than West Palm Beach, Florida. They're very similar, but it's more. It's always interesting to me because, like Pastor Tim said, I've been doing this a long time. I've been all across the country, talking to people, working with people. Tourism economies have higher rates of homelessness, and it's, it's, if, we, if we're not careful, it's going to get a lot worse. I also went to Hawaii in 2017. Uh, kind of a funny story was uh, they, they have a, a statewide leadership academy on ending homelessness and they invited 10 people from the mainland to come enhance their experience. I got this email asking me to come to Hawaii just to be with others about homelessness and I thought it was a scam. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. But I went to Hawaii and I was with the people and I talked with them and it was very similar. There was a lot of foreign ownership of land and properties and corporations and, and, and there was vacation rentals all over. Now, Vacation rentals are important. Our area is beautiful, we share with the world. People need to come here and have a place to stay, but we have to balance that with the, the people that are in need. Some of the myths of, of homelessness um, is, is people wanting to be homeless. We talked a little bit about that. No one, all the years I've been doing this, no one wanted to be out there. They may not have wanted the, the help or the offering that was being presented. One of the things about street outreach is we have to get creative and find what's actually going to help the, the person or the people we're working with. And, and the only way to do that is to listen to the people. If you've ever talked to Michelle or Bill, you've probably heard them say something like that. This photo here, it's down in the park behind the library, downtown Traverse City. There's a man laying there, it's summertime. Uh, he's got his shoes off, and I don't, you probably can't see it on the screen there, but there's a swarm of flies around his feet. It's probably the first time he took off his boots in weeks. I didn't know this at the time, but I remember this gentleman laying there is actually from Leelanau County. We, we know that Traverse City, a lot of people end up there because it's the urban hub of northern Michigan. And this gentleman um, grew up here, lived downstate for a long time, was living in the basement of his parents downstate and, and had trauma in his life. He couldn't take it anymore, drinking was taking over his life and he was gonna come up here and, and try to live back where he came from with his uncle. It didn't work out. I remember when I first met him, it was actually during the Cherry Festival. The, the police reached out to me and said, we have a missing persons report, Ryan. Can you go see about this person? And, and I found him that day. It usually takes about three hours on average to find anybody experiencing homelessness. We go to the usual spots, go to parks and things like that, and talk to other people experiencing homelessness, and they help us. We found him and didn't get anywhere with him that first day, other than introducing myself. And I had an intern with me, and we, we found him, and we, we talked to him. He was homeless for about four years, and he's now in housing. People thought and pointed and said, that guy wants to be homeless. He left a, he left a place where he had to be. But the safety of going home where you came from in troubled times happens a lot. Sometimes people say, 
Oh, Traverse City is so great. The services are so awesome. Ryan Hannon is here, so we have people coming to be homeless here. And that really isn't how it works. If we have someone from somewhere else, it's usually a situation like this, where they come back home, or they come, they come to stay with somebody and it doesn't work out. Rarely, very rare do we see someone homeless somewhere else and then homeless here. Although, if you've ever had any food from five loaves and two fish, you might say, yes, maybe. <laughs> people, people will come for that, but all kidding aside, people need to eat, right? We need to take care of the people while housing is, is working to be obtained. We use a, a housing first approach. It's a complete opposite of what it's usually been across the country of where you have to come into a place and get morally straight, mentally well or sober to get help. That doesn't work. Housing first, we, we, we realize everyone wants a place to live. No one wants to be living out there. They may say things like, I choose to live this way or I'm, I can survive out here. That's usually a, a veil, a, a way to save face. People, when you're homeless, you're always the homeless person. You always have to talk to somebody who wants to inquire about your homelessness and why you're there. So it's a lot easier and more dignified to say something like, I want this. There's not a lot of choice or control when you're homeless. So that's, that's an interesting thing when you, when you interact with folks. But over time, as you get to get to know them and they trust you, you the, the real story starts to come out. We know everyone's ready for housing right now. They don't have to do anything to get ready for housing other than all the paperwork that has to be done, that sort of thing that we help them with in outreach. Um, people can and do heal and recover. It's impossible to get sober while living homeless, nearly impossible. All my years, no one has ever done it. They try over and over and over again and come back out. If they're still homeless, they use almost the same day. Employment, there's people that work, live in tents in the woods, and maybe wait staff or dishwashers in the restaurants that you eat in downtown. The, the pay it takes to, to live doesn't add up. This is a, a photo of a, a Old camp, it's no longer there. The, the gentleman here is also, that was living here was in, in housing. He lived all winter. We used to have to go and kind of strongly convince him to come in when it would be nights like this to come into Safe Harbor. People do all they can to stay alive and safe out there. Now, shelters aren't the greatest thing. They're a place that's warm and, and available, but if you had to, to live there, sleep there, with a bunch of other people, it's, it's really not ideal. It's wonderful and it's life-saving, but we have to do more. I got the photos here, the Goodwill Inn and Safe Harbor. We think about housing-focused shelter. No one wants to be there. We, 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 one of the interesting things at Safe Harbor, it's if you ever volunteer there, if you haven't done it, I, I encourage you to because it's, it's a way that you can interact with people that are experiencing homelessness in a safe, um, kind of structured environment. It's really a beautiful thing. There's opportunities at the Goodwill Inn as well. It's just the, the setups are a little bit different, so it's more like just serving meals at the Goodwill Inn. Where Safe Harbor, you can serve meals, uh, you know, control the, the laundry and the shower desk there and, and just sit and be and listen to folks. But I put housing-focused shelter here because we have to realize we can't just provide shelter and leave people there. That doesn't work. We have to work on helping them. And so Housing Focus Shelter, we provide housing resources, put up a housing wall, places for people to rent. Maybe they don't want to interact and talk about how I can give you all my information and sign up for a subsidy. If they have an opportunity to find a place, why don't we just help them do that? And one of the interesting things at, at Safe Harbor now, COVID has really you know, affected us all pretty greatly, right? We have, but now at Safe Harbor, there's a new entrance. And it's a, the, the way people come into the building is much different than it used to be. It's much less welcoming. You come in and, and two at a time, and then you have the, the questions and the bag search and the uh, assign your bed. Uh, if, if, if you weren't there the night before, you gotta wait till seven after everyone gets in to, to get your bed assigned. And then you talk to people in this small space all along the way, you're going, person to person to person, finally get in there and there's a volunteer and it's like another person to talk to. 
And some people just want to come in and just be left alone. And if you find yourself in that situation, it's okay. Just the fact of providing to be there with the person shows the love of God. I also included this here. We have a, a street medicine collaborative, part of uh, street outreach. We, we lead a team of uh, volunteer doctors and healthcare providers. It's really interesting because we were all ready to go, had the program to launch, and then COVID hit. And all the healthcare providers and ourselves kind of went, uh, I don't want to say spinning out of control, but it, it was really a whirlwind. And I, I won't go too much into the COVID thing. I, I think I did a presentation for the missions committee last year about that. We all have COVID brain. It was really a whirlwind. We had um, everything shut down. The meals kept going. And that was a, a act of God, I think, because we couldn't have fed everybody. There was a huge need. That's when we saw Bill and Michelle step up and start what they were doing. And it's a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. The Street Medicine Collaborative, we, we go to where the people are. The COVID kind of made a way, right? It forced the, the group to actually get out there. When testing started, we were able to roll out the testing and get going. But part of street outreach is we bring the, the doctors to the people. And we rely on that trust that we've built, that safe um, time and space bubble, I call it. And people rely on us and trust, and we're able to connect with them. This part of the Street Medicine Collaborative, this is a, a woman um, who actually also happens to be from Leelanau County, and I did not plan it this way, it just was like that. She's here in the Traverse City in the woods. Uh, she burned her arm. I, I spared you the goriness because it, it is not a nice picture. She fell in the fire one night, burned her arm, went to the hospital, left the hospital, and they gave her some bandages and some cream. And when I came along and found out it had been four days and, and like it was starting to get infected, it wasn't good. And this was early on when we had the, um, we were doing the, the COVID testing at the day center uh, in the afternoon. So this would have been a, a Thursday morning and I knew that the street medicine people had to see this. And she promised me she would get down to the day center we had where the people would be so they can see it. and. She didn't show up, and part of the nicest thing about the Street Medicine Collaborative is they told me she didn't show up. So Friday mornings, we go out and do testing out in the woods. So we were, I was able to go, and it, it was a cold morning, probably about, I don't know, 40 degrees in the morning, and, and people, when you're in your tent and you're warm, it's hard to get out, right? It, we had to, um, I had to kind of coax her out. It took me about 15 minutes to get her up and out um, to see the people, but it really, saved her life. Infection like this is not good. Going to the people. This is uh, the Munson Family Practice doctors. They have residency, they have student doctors that come out, so that's helped us create the sustainability for the street medicine program. They've committed to every Friday and now it's looking like we're gonna get closer to every day to be covered to have street doctors out there as well. Uh, it takes a lot of planning and meetings and, and that sort of thing, but um, it's also good for the doctors. Part of the, the curriculum they have in, in, their, in their doctorship, if you will, is to learn about uh, you know, helping people that are low income. So I'm grateful that this Munson Family Practice has built in street medicine. So as doctors get trained and go off into the world, they know about homelessness and the realities of it and how best to help. Homelessness is really bad for your health. This here is a, a, a photo. We have uh, every December 21st, the longest night of the year, is National Homeless Persons Memorial Day. We do a, a walk to remember the people that have died. This past December, we walked and remembered 13 people experiencing homelessness that died in the Traverse City area. We also remember people that moved into housing and then died very quickly. We, we prioritize, there's not enough time or help available for people. So we prioritize, we, we make a, a list based on evidence, a, a, a medical acuity, who's most likely to die next on the street, and we work to serve them. So when we have someone who moves into housing that has been homeless on the street for a long time, they may die soon after getting in. I think the soonest was 37 days. 
We remember them too on National Homeless Persons Memorial Day. I'll pause here for a moment. Housing advocacy is some things you can do, but I, I want to share some some quotes from people. When when um, when I was awarded the uh, humanitarian award that day in November, December, October, all the days flow together, right? It's a lot of stuff going on. But I, I before that, I, I told the the people. I walked around town and I told them about this war, award I was getting, and, and they were so proud of me and thankful. And I said, "But I want I want to share to the world." I said, "What do you want the world to know?" And so I asked them, and I wrote down some quotes, and I want to share them with you. This I hope helps to to kind of dispel some of the myths about homelessness. I am a man. Please treat me with dignity and respect. Why isn't Safe Harbor open all year? We are not felons. Someone rolled up and gave me money and I gave it to a mom that was staying at the Goodwill Inn. I'm 65 years old, it's hard living out here. We take care of each other. It's hard, conditions are deplorable. I wish I had a choice. I never imagined this could happen to me. Homelessness can happen to anyone. Living out here, sleeping in damp bedding makes my medical conditions worse. I wish people were more forgiving to people in need. I'm working hard as hell to get out of this. People treat us like lepers. I've started drinking. It makes it tolerable out here. There's a lot of danger out here. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. You start losing some skills and start thinking in a different frame of mind. I did not grow up this way. I thought it was best to, to read the quotes right from the people. I can share these stories and I do it well and, and try to get the point across. They say the same things I'm, I'm saying to you all. Whenever I speak publicly, I'm on the news a lot and, and I always want it, you know, the people that I serve, if they were to hear what I'm saying, is it really what's going on? That's really helped me to be able to share the realities of homelessness, but also the hope, right? There is a way out. We have. We know that housing ends homelessness. It's the only cure for homelessness is housing. Sure, some people have higher needs than others. Some people need what we call supportive housing, where they get a subsidy and a helper. It costs a lot less money to actually do that with people than to fund all what it takes to help people while they're homeless. We need homeless shelters. We need meals. We need stuff. But do people have to stay so long in homelessness? One of the things um, I wanted to share was there in the Bible it talks about there will always be the poor among us, right? And sometimes I think people take that the wrong way. I would say that does it always have to be the same poor people, right? People can and do recover. They can get out of this. Housing advocacy, we, there's some uh, housing going to be built right next to Safe Harbor on the property. When, when the city uh, sold the, the land to Safe Harbor to build the building there, they threw in the lot next door under the condition that affordable housing was going to be built. So you'll see a campaign for fundraising for that coming soon. Um, it's a wonderful thing because it's hard to find housing. The gentleman we saw laying in the the park there with, with the flies around his feet. I don't know how many times in the wintertime I thought he would die out there. I can't believe he didn't die. He got into housing. And he's doing better. He's not being dropped off at Safe Harbor after being found in a snowbank. I don't have to go look for him under the bridge and say, come on in, it's cold. He's been in housing like a year and a half. Still, still has it. Somebody literally scraped off the ground into housing is still successful. Um, the city of Traverse City has made housing a priority. There's 
Housing North is a, a wonderful uh, organization that works to, to help communities look at are they housing ready as far as zoning and building and, and, and including more housing. And I would say that even when all this housing talk is going on, we have to advocate to make sure there's zero to 30% income, AMI income levels included in that, or a homeless preference. We have um, landlord incentives through the coalition. If a, a landlord were to rent to someone in one of our programs, a new landlord, they would get a $1,000 bonus that they could do whatever they want with. They might come to Fishtown, right? Or ride the boat over to the island, or pour that money back into their properties to help them make, make them uh, a little better living place. Speak, what can you do? You can speak, talk to people who are experiencing homelessness. You don't have to cross the street. You can say hello, look them in the eyes, just like you would anyone else you're passing by. Um, I don't have glasses, but if I did, I'd use them right now. That's a small screen back there. <laughs> Fund, you guys are raising funds, that's, that's awesome. We, we thank you for that. Uh, getting involved, volunteering. I don't know if you've ever been down to the park when Bill and Michelle go down there and serve the food. Wonderful way to interact. Safe Harbor, the Good Bull Inn. You know, sometimes maybe, you know, COVID, you don't want to give it to the people or, or get it from them. You can help out by doing food at Safe Harbor by just providing the food. You don't have to do the serving. There's all ways. Every level uh, is available to help. Educate people. Tell them what you've learned today. Advocate. When I talked about those housing, if there's low-income housing built in your community or in your town or uh, areas maybe region-wide, we need people to show up and say, what about the people who are homeless? We cannot forget about them. There's my email there if you want to reach out. Uh, we can talk about uh, uh, collaborative ways or, or non-traditional non ways to try to help and get involved. Here we have uh, myself outreach in there. This is a planned photo that's not an actual person experiencing homelessness, it's a paid actor. And we needed something to, you know, for stuff like this and promotion, but we don't like to to show the people experiencing homelessness. Homelessness is a private matter, right? It's a terrible thing. We wouldn't want to be up there. Think about the, the, I wanted to share this too, the worst day in your life ever that you've ever had. When you're homeless, it's like every day is the worst day of your life. You wouldn't want that broadcast to the world, right? We have uh, 200, about 250, 275 people experiencing homelessness around Northwest Michigan. What if we got that down to 150? Shelters would be able to take everybody. We'd have less people living rough out there. The idea is we're working towards getting people into housing. People stay homeless longer because there's not enough affordable housing. Um, it seems like doom and gloom, but it's, it's really true. There's not enough even affordable housing. We know that. We have to keep fighting. Ways you can help. It says invest in systems approaches. You guys are donating money to the Goodwill Inn. It's, it's a, we use a system approach. We use our partners. We work together. When you come into the shelter, there's expectation of helping find housing. One of the things I, I forgot to mention earlier is when, you know, when people don't accept the help, one of, one of them is sometimes they don't feel worthy of the help. Talking with them, they're taking a shower at the Goodwill Inn, a place, helping them realize you are worthy of the help. Let's continue, let's try again. People have had, they live, it's hard living out there. Join in the conversation, Facebook, Twitter, the gram, I think the kids call it, the Insta, Instagram, right? Effective ways, education, keep reaching out to people. And it takes time. I've been working since 2007 to help end homelessness. And at first, we didn't have a system like this. It took a long, long time. Now we have it, we have to build capacity. We think about, there's some communities around the country that have, they've called, they've ended veteran homelessness. What that means is you get people housed faster than they're going into homelessness. How do they do it? They have a whole lot of money and resources and 
it's a lot less stigmatized to be a homeless veteran than to be a regular homeless person, right? We gotta continue to break down that stigma. Shameless plug, there it is, websites. Tweet Outreach is my Twitter, if that's your thing. Feel free to reach out. The most important thing is to remember that people experiencing homelessness are people. We can't categorize them into one big group. Everyone's path is different. But it has to lead to home. And when, when people die while homeless, they make it out of homelessness, right? It doesn't have to be that way. Hopefully I've left you with some hope. We know how to end homelessness. There's been hundreds of people that would point and say they don't want help or their drinking and drugging has caused them to, to do this. It's not gonna be worth it. That are housed and successfully housed and now helping other people. Thank you all for your, your time today.